Hi, my name is Nina Plushkova. Um, I'm a software engineer at Zolo, and for this lightning talk, I'm going to give an overview of how to locally test your Istio VM integration with the Calco plugin. So if you've ever gone through the Istio VM installation guide, there's a list of uh, prerequisites uh, at the very top. And one of the requirements is that we need uh, IP connectivity to our east-west gateway if it's put in the mesh. Optionally, we also want to have connectivity to the, uh, the pod networking uh, for enhanced performance. So the goal of this talk is how we demonstrate this fourth point. We want to have our L3 networking and we want a way to reach the pods directly from the VM and vice versa from the cluster on the local machine. So we're going to onboard and connect the virtual machine without using the load balancer Kubernetes service type and just relying on cluster IP and pod IP. Um, and in, in our uh, local setup, we still need to have a stable address for our initial bootstrapping of the VM. And we still need our east-west gateway deployed uh, to the control plane, uh, uh, to the, uh, <laughs> the cluster, so we can have our control plane uh, traffic flow through it to our, our agent. Um, and uh, in the multi-network example, uh, the gateway will also have the service traffic flow through it. Um, and in production deployments, usually we have the communication between uh, Kubernetes nodes and non-Kubernetes nodes handled by like sophisticated techniques like VPC and VPN. But on your developer machine, you're probably running your Kubernetes nodes in a simulated environment like Minikube, uh, K3, or Pine. So it's a little tricky to test the virtual machine integration in these sim simulated environments. But there are definitely benefits to testing locally. So other than the convenience of having a local setup, um, there's uh, other considerations like the cost of running in real environments. Um, it's usually easier to update uh, your local environment and um, you might have existing tools and tests that run in your simulated environments that you can leverage when onboarding virtual machines. So in this demo, I'm going to have a K3 cluster that's going to be running locally with multipass. And before we deploy the Calico plugin, we need to calculate the pod and service ranges um, to, to use. So uh, our, in our example, we're going to use uh, the, the 20 range of IP addresses, which gets uh, resolved to a max of 4,906 service uh, IP addresses. And uh, we're going to use a range of 24 to create a max of 110 pods. And um, the reason we, we have uh, these slightly different numbers here is uh, our, uh, our cluster setup is going to be running on uh, 192.168. So we want a, a slightly different uh, range for our services and our pods so we can highlight the difference easily when we're looking at the demo environment. Uh, we're also going to disable Trifex, so uh, we're not going to have a load balancer and we don't need it. <laughs> so uh, and then that gets installed by default when you uh, deploy K3, so we, we're going to disable it. Um, yeah, so here's our overview of our, our demo environment. So uh, we have one uh, single network. So um, the uh, our, our K3's cluster and our virtual machine are running in the same network, so the services should be able to communicate directly with one another. Um, and the, the example that we have is uh, this chain of microservices that are, are going to call each other in sequence. So when we hit customers, customers are going to hit preference, and then preferences will reach out to the recommendations application that's running on the virtual machine. Um, and if this was a multi-network setup, then we'd have to send a split horizon EDS updates. So all the service traffic would also go through the east-west gateway, and our services can talk to one another. Um, but in order uh, to get our other direction to work so our VM can talk to our customer, we will need to update the IP table uh, routes with um, the, uh, the service and the pod uh, addresses to, to route to our, our host routes. So um, to do this, we're going to use the Calico networking plugin. And uh, Project Calico is an open source project uh, which uh, provides a CNI for Kubernetes workloads. And you can really use any networking plugin but you need a way to, uh, to get the host routes. So um, when you're demoing from a local machine like a Mac, uh, you have some restrictions on what you can do to the IP tables. And uh, with Calico, we can set the routes and add the symbol uh, routes to get our, our traffic working in both directions uh, relatively uh, easily. So let's take a look at our demo environment. So in the top uh, terminal, I have uh, my, my cluster running and on this cluster, we take a look, we have Calco and uh, SDRD. So let's first take a look at our Calico deployment. Um, so we installed Calico using um, this operator. And uh, in the operator, we specify the CIVR, which matches our, our pod range. And we also enable IP forwarding, which lets our pods and services talk to the outside world. Um, so that looks good. And then let's take a look at the pods and services. 
Um, here it looks like we have a steer D running, which is good, and uh, we have a gateway deployed as well. So uh, the gateway is running, and um, this ingress gateway is going to function as both the north south gateway and the east west gateway. So when we hit our customer's uh, service, we're going to hit it through the gateway. Um, but uh, this is also handling all the uh, control plane traffic to, to send updates to the agent running in the VM. Um, speaking of the agent, it's actually currently not running in the VM. So um, when we look at our, um, so yeah, in addition to that, we have uh, gateways. So um, like I mentioned, we're gonna hit the customer's uh, service through the ingress gateway. So we have a gateway there and we've uh, exposed a COD um, so our VM can actually get updates. Um, and then in terms of our example services, we have customers and preferences running on the, the cluster. And then we've set up um, an additional service for the recommendations. And this application is actually running on the virtual machine, um, but currently Istio isn't running here. So um, we've already onboarded Istio um, and, and shut the um, deployment down. So uh, here we, we have the correct address when we create a, a workload entry, but when we curl through the, the gateway, um, it's not going to respond with anything because there's no agent running on the virtual machine. So let's uh, try that, um, and then let's get the, the service URL. So let's uh, hit the customer endpoint, and we get an error as expected. So now let's actually start Istio on, on this uh, VM, and let's take a look at the logs. Cool. Oh, so Istio has started. That looks good. Let's try curling again, and now we get a, a healthy response. So let's just do that a couple times for, for sanity. Nice. Um, cool. So um, going back to the VM, let's exit out of the logs. Um, so if we look at what got configured here, um, during the onboarding process, we set our um, discovery address and C address to uh, the cluster IP. So this is um, the IP of, of the cluster in here, and we'll actually have to do this for the route tables as well. So let's take a look at what's running. And yeah, so we have our, our recommendations application running locally. That looks good. And um, let's try a curl. So the first time we curl, uh, this is going to fail because we have no way of resolving this address, um, which is running you know, locally on the, the cluster um, from the VM. So when we curl from the VM, this is going to time out. So um, let's try getting the cluster IP so we can uh, actually use that when configuring the, the IP routes. Um, Cool. Okay, so that's our IP. Um, and then, yeah, so let's look at the log. I killed that early. Okay, so it, it timed out, didn't get a response um, as expected. So now let's try um, setting this as the IP and adding some route. Uh, so here's, our, we have a route for the services and a route for the, the pods. So these values, if you recall, match our configuration that we calculated earlier in the slides. And now if you look at the IP uh, routes, we see that um, both of these get um, get resolved through um, through the Ethernet. So now when we curl um, the customer default service, um, now we should actually be able to hit the cluster one IP um, and we get a, a healthy response. So if you look at our, our logs again, um, we should see, yep, so uh, now we finally get a, a healthy response. Um, cool, so yeah, so that's all I actually had for the demo. Um, I'd like to thank Kamesh from, from Solo for all of his helpful Ansible scripts and, um, and setup help. And I'll be in the chat to answer any questions. So yeah, I hope you have a, a great IstioCon and uh, yeah, thanks.